bang. So here we are with uh, an artist I really admire and have actually discovered in 2019. I'm a bit ashamed to say it. I'm sorry about that. But I have to say that the first time I met Blood Red Hourglass was when you played with Evergrey. The first encounter with the band was when you played live. Hello, Jarko. Welcome in Metal Radio. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot. And hi, everyone watching. It's really, um, I shouldn't be this truthful and say that I only met you in 2019 when the band's been around since 2005. But what I mean to say is um, seeing you guys for the first time live, you know, I didn't know one thing. I didn't have any expectations at all. And after the show was done, I felt in love with the record. I mean, you guys are, I don't know. And I don't know why I haven't heard you before. I'm, and I'm really sorry about that. Well, it's better late than never. And you are forgiven. I'm glad to hear the feedback you just <laughs> told me because I'll definitely take that. <laughs> so back in 2019 was your latest release with Godsend. Correct. And You've been around since 2005 when it was your first demo. So you've been you've been around for quite a bit. That is correct. Has the journey so far been? Uh, slow. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, you're never happy. Uh, progress. That's what we try for. And uh, yeah, it's been a long road, but uh, we come from a small city and uh, it's uh, yeah, it's it has taken a while uh, to reach the status where we are as a band uh, today. But um, I'm obviously super glad to notice that, especially during the let's say in last three, uh, three to four years, uh, we have gained a lot of knowledge uh, among people, and I'm really happy to see that it the snowball has kind of finally started to roll properly and and uh, can wait for the for the next release and uh, see the future steps that we have ahead but uh, it's been a tricky ride for sure do you have any regrets for the story so far do you think that you might have stirred wrong somewhere um i can't really I can't really say that we done done terribly wrong at any point. I think what what was the biggest issue that we came out with our debut album a bit late. Um, we should have somehow managed to push it out somewhere, let's say, in 2010, when the, when the metal was a lot bigger thing, especially in Finland. Uh, many festivals where the lineups were filled with metal bands, and we kind of you know missed that train when. Uh, when the metal metal was huge here in Finland, and uh, definitely the way I see it and feel it made things a bit more complicated. So we were a bit late, and uh, uh, looking back at our our catalog and discography right now, of course, um, I'm not sure if our debut album really represents the band that we are today. So I think we kind of made made it made the difference on where the oceans burn in 2014. And that's kind of more the path we've been following since that album. So um, somehow I feel we we only started on, with that album, <laughs> to be honest. But uh, no big regrets. I mean, yeah, it's I, I still stand behind everything we've done so far. Well, I have seen people referring to you as the new wave of melodic death metal. Do you feel that you represent a genre within a genre. I mean, you are relighting the fire of the death of the melodic death metal fans. Mm, I like to think that way myself, for sure. Yeah, I think uh, we are still carrying the the old school elements from melodic death metal, and uh, obviously also trying to bring something new and fresh on the table, uh, make the 
make the old school melodic death metal sound a bit more modern, maybe even bring in some metalcore elements, some more chill elements, some ambient vibes and stuff like that to make it make it uh, a bit more fresh, uh, make it a bit more modern. And that's the direction we're heading uh, more and more. Uh, and yeah, I uh, <clears throat> I like that term. I like it a lot. I hope we, we are bringing something fresh on the table, so I'll take that. Well, another thing that I have uh, read about you guys is that a lot of people recognize some thrash elements in your sound. Mm -hmm. Tell me a few things about your influences. Is um, is the thrashy sound something that comes from the background of uh, your of the band? Mm, I can't really talk mm, for for the rest of the guys uh, when it comes to the instrumental side of things. Uh, of course, their influences are in in trash bands as well. They grew up listening to those bands. Uh, to me personally, I'm I kind of ignited a bit late into everything and started with new metal stuff. <laughs> started with battle, bands like uh, Lip Biscuit and and Corn and Slipknot, and that was huge back in the day to me. So, uh, but yeah, uh, of course, trash is also it's part of our sound and. Uh, it's it's still there. Why why get rid of it if it works? So I see no issue. But uh, uh, I can't really name the bands that that the other other guys are listening. Um, by the bands you you just mentioned my style of singing is uh i would say originally it was very influenced by randy plitt from lamb of god that was maybe the reason uh, i cut into more harsh metal i uh started my singing back in the days by uh, trying to sing some linkin park so props to chester for <laughs> one step closer that was the first song i somehow uh tried to learn to scream and yeah it hurt a lot <laughs> i was like 14 maybe but uh yeah there's been like so many influences i mean in flames has been huge obviously to me anders is super cool vocalist and of course more modern stuff like architects um but yeah there are many but I'm not sure if I can really, you know, name one certain huge influence vocalist personally. So it's a it's a sum up of many dudes. You said that when you first tried singing, it was hurtful. It hurt. Uh, uh, yeah, well, I tried screaming <laughs> and that was I can't even imagine how that sounded like, but you gotta start from somewhere and I just went full blast, which is obviously the wrong way to go. And of course it started to hurt like hell in the in the few few first days. But uh, yeah, that's where it all started from, you know, and uh, since that it's been solid good for me, no pain, all gain. <laughs> Taken up lessons in vocal stuff? Uh, no, unfortunately not. I've, I've been going through all of that stuff on my own, so. Oh, I see. I Someday see. when I get old and tired, maybe I'll do that and learn to actually sing instead of just screaming. We'll see about that. Do you do, do you follow a specific, some specifics uh, in terms of maintaining your voice? I mean, no smoking, for example? Mm -hmm. no. Well, I used to smoke not that much haven't done that uh, during this year at all but uh, to me it's been fairly easy to handle my my physics and my voice i actually never ever had any issues with my voice except the very first time when we were recording the upcoming album for the first time ever i managed to blow my voice during the last song <laughs> or the second last song that so we had to we had to uh, postpone the the recordings for the for the very last song, 
on that album. But uh, other than that, it's been such a smooth road when it comes to my voice control and uh, the, you know, really haven't had to maintain it that much. Drink some red wine, a lot of water, that will do. <laughs> nice. Okay, so over the last year, you've had two new singles, Drag Me The Rain and Veritas, mm -hmm. two, two video clips that I think that Drag Me The Rain was mostly about the song and Veritas maybe is mostly, it's both the song and the visual, the visual choice you made. It, it's really artistic. And I have to say that the aesthetics of the band in general isn't what you would what what you would expect. You always take a certain path. Let's talk about the music first, and then about the aesthetics. Mm -hmm. Drag and Veritas. Are you in a creative mood? Creative, uh, yeah, well, sorta. <laughs> always more or less creative mood. Uh, musically, mm, Track Me the Rain was the first song. It's a single from the upcoming album, just like Veritas is. Uh, unfortunately, can't really talk about the details yet. But uh, "Track Me the Rain" was um, was the first song from the upcoming album that I actually did the vocals for. So I felt that was sort of a, like an easy continuity from the previous album, Godsend. And I felt that it uh, resembles pretty much the same sound in overall as uh, what we did on Godsend. Uh, of course, it has some fresh touch when uh, the composer of the song song has uh, has been changed since Ante left the band and Joni and Eero stepped in and Eero is the one who composed Truck Me The Rain. So yeah, it was something fresh. I was very excited to start working on that and I uh, was also super happy to see that everything just sort of, you know, fell into, fell into place when I started to work on it and... Um, yeah, I don't know what to tell about the musical side of things. They just, you know, come when you feel like it and, or when you force yourself to do something. So, and uh, I would say it was the very same with where it does, uh, you know, very, very smooth processing over. I'll just usually work from home. I'll do some uh, pre-production of pre-production here at home. And then I go to rehearsal place and start screaming that shit on, on tracks and... Yeah, that's how it develops. Are you uh, composing? You said that it's uh, that both the songs are in are from an up album. We can't say anything about it. Well, not much. We still don't have a date for the album because the situation is what it is. Uh, obviously, we will come out with the information and release the title and the cover arts and track list and everything for you guys when when we have some some information about when it's going to be. But uh, I'm fairly confident I can say that the album will be released during this year. It's going most likely going to be late 21, but uh, yeah. Yeah, I see. Well, COVID has been a drag for all bands. Mm -hmm. How has it been for you guys? Well, uh, for sure it has made things complicated. Uh, luckily, we managed to play two festival shows last summer. And there was a sweet spot uh, when, when, you know, the situation was fairly okay. And uh, we played Saari Helvetti and Dark River festivals here in Finland in, uh, I think it was August. And uh, yeah, yeah, so it sort of made the, made the break from playing the live shows at least a bit, a bit easier and shorter. But of course, we miss playing live like crazy and it affects everything. You know, it feels like there's not much going on. You really need to... <laughs> come up with different sort of plans and it's uh, it's been difficult for us because uh, we live in different cities and our drummer Jarko he lives in Estonia so crossing the border is not that simple these days and uh, yeah it's been of course uh, it's more or less the same for everyone of course but uh, not the best times <laughs> to <laughs> to be an artist for sure Yes, I think musicians and all the crew around mm -hmm. tour is suffering at the moment. Yes.
responding to this time? Are you, are fans reaching out to you guys? Do you do you try to find ways to keep in touch, to keep us warm? Yeah, of course, we, we try to keep our social media channels rolling and try to post some stuff to keep people engaged. But uh, yeah, mostly it's been been about the, the feedback for the new songs, which obviously has been really good. And we're very thankful for that. Uh, but yeah, uh, the band is keeping us busy for sure. There's a lot going on, you know, when the album release is closing in. Um, we are shooting the videos. We are there's a lot to do. There's a shitload of stuff to do before the release. It kind of feels like uh, when you get out of the studio, the actual work only starts. And uh, there's a lot of planning. There's a lot of shooting and stuff like that. So yeah, we try to keep our ourselves busy. And of course, we have also started to started to compose some new stuff when there is time and. Yeah, try to try to come up with some something to do. <laughs> I see. Okay. Um, so at the moment, tell me. I was wondering about your creative process. Being locked up, mm -hmm. how do you how do you exchange ideas? How do you? How does that work? Well, basically, the way we operate is that um, whoever is the dude that compose the song usually program some sort of a drums into it uh, plays the guitars maybe the bass uh, goes in the keyboards then he will send the demo for for the rest of the guys in our own super top secret group where the magic happens <laughs> and uh, yeah we uh, we exchange the ideas we give the feedback and work it from there and it uh, it sort of goes the way that each guy has a responsibility to carry on his own product till the end from that feedback. And uh, then when the instrumental versions of the songs reach a certain level of quality, so to say, or we feel that they are fairly ready, I usually start working on the vocals. But to be completely honest, I personally found the 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 time period during the COVID very much uninspirational. It just sort of kills the flow. It kills the creativity and the, ah, it's been shit. I'm just waiting for the better times and maybe that will give give some motivation to to start working again and and bringing the fresh ideas. And of course, you can always work on something, but it's it's not the same. It's so dependent on the mood you are having and you really can't force yourself to make art when you don't have the stimulants. Yeah, it's sort of, it's sort of sad, but uh, that's the way it is. And uh, but I see no problem because we're definitely not in a rush and there's there's no need to work on new material right now, you know, the there's still an album to be released before we need to work on new stuff, so <laughs> it's all good. What does inspire you? Life in general, my own experiences. I always written all all our songs and lyrics about my own personal life, and uh, that's the way I will I'll plan to keep everything in the future as well. Mm -hmm. uh, I really don't like any fantasy fiction stuff at all. I'm such a realist guy and that's the way I want to keep our keep our stuff in the future and that is the biggest inspiration is the human life. I think that's one of the elements that sets you apart from many bands. That's so true. That's one of the key elements yep. being the, the themes you you touch. Are there any uh, musical or most of all, yeah, I'd say musical things that uh, musical ideas you wouldn't touch because you'd say, no, that's not our field. Or are you open to experimenting? I'm open. I'm absolutely open to everything as long as it will fit into our stuff and our production. And I never set myself any boundaries when it comes to music. I hate being, you know, categorized in a certain genre. I think it's just plain stupid. 
in in my opinion we just play metal because the sound is harsh but there's a lot of pop elements i mean our song structure is fairly close to pop music and it's just harsh version of everything <laughs> you know so so why create why create boundaries when there's absolutely no need to do that so the next step is the announcement of the album or should we expect a new video you will get a new video fairly soon that's something i can say here uh -huh. hold on a few more weeks and some new stuff is coming up i wanted to ask something mostly because i feel more like a fan towards the band and less like a media person mm -hmm. i enjoy very much the playfulness you have towards your social media channels i mean uh, the other day you were running a contest about the comments on uh, veritas mm -hmm. yeah you'd say that the most the most uh, funny one would win and is it something that you do on your own is it something that comes off naturally something that you've discussed as a tactic or uh we've been discussing would... discussing of course i would like to just say you know that we're we're so funny guys and <laughs> mastered the jokes <laughs> and fun and it's all <laughs> all chill but that's not the reality you know we've been discussing about it a lot of what we're gonna do to keep you know to keep the keep the wheel turning and and the show running because the time is difficult and uh, yeah, uh, try to stay active in the social media as well. And and uh, yeah, we always love to read what people say and comment. It's It works both ways, I think. So yeah, lately we've been doing some, some things different and uh, glad people seem to like it. Would you would you uh, maintain that sort of tactic after you can be on the road? Yeah, well, why not? I mean, I see no harm done. So uh, as long as people seem to think it's uh, it's a valid content for the channel, why not? Okay, so I'd like to thank you very much for your time. I'm really yeah. looking forward to your next, uh, new, your new releases, your new video, your new album. I hope everything turns out as fast as possible. That's what we all hope for, for sure. And I hope I can see you guys live again. You will, sooner or later. That will happen for sure. That sounded very confident. Are you coming yeah. to Greece? <laughs> <laughs> no dates yet, but yeah, of course we are coming sooner or later. They can't stop us. I know that. Thank you.